Bravo. When you hear of the developer Acquire, titles such as Octopath Traveler and Akiba Strip might come to mind. However, in recent years, the team has attempted to take on indie projects that haven't delivered that same experience as some of their contracted titles. When it comes to Ancient Weapon Holy, the groundwork is here for a decent roguelike action experience, but it remains extremely surface level from beginning to end. Ancient Weapon Holy has a brief introduction with an opening image crawl detailing the reasons why the humanoid weapon Holly seeks revenge against humans. There really isn't much to the narrative as moments later you assume the role of Holly where you must ascend 10 floors of a dungeon to reach your goal. In the past I've needed fewer reasons to play a roguelike but I've never been so caught off guard at the beginning of a game. It makes your initial moves confusing because you aren't totally on board with the task at hand, mostly because you don't know what to do. If that's not bad enough, the only other cutscene with story elements doesn't happen until you beat the game, so be prepared for it to just be you and Holly for the remainder of the 2-3 hour experience. The tutorial has been reduced to a few text prompts, but this is a game where you'll need to learn to figure out many of the nuances on your own. Without much of a story to back it, the game boils down to taking out these generic enemy creatures that receive color swaps every few floors and destroy the floor's gates to progress. The roguelike systems are pretty forgiving as you retain all of your upgrades from previous runs, meaning that it only is a matter of time before you coast your way to the end. This does mitigate some of the daunting systems of roguelikes, but it also makes runs less about strategy and more about resource gathering in early levels to improve your base stats. Regardless, if you die, you only go back to the previous floor and you don't have to start over. Every dungeon layout is more or less the same, with the objective being to take out the gates that summon powerful enemies and move on. The summoned creatures are known as slayers and they will also need to be disposed of before progressing, but once summoned, they beeline to your gate to destroy it which results in a game over. However, to take these enemies out requires you to remove the floor from under them, which creates a hole that they fall in, and then refill that hole with the removed block, which then takes them out. There are no other bosses in the game or other strategies to take these enemies down. It also turns into the most fun aspect of the experience as you scurry around the map looking for something fun to do. Digging a perfect hole under the Slayer and filling it where there's a bunch of enemies around you is pretty satisfying, but I wouldn't call this intuitive gameplay. Normal enemies can be taken out with magical attacks, but I don't think it's totally necessary. While they do drop gems that can be used for upgrading stats, you will likely get the amount you need from simply pushing forward and not stopping for anything. There are chests that contains new abilities and materials, so just look for those and you'll probably be fine. The idea is, if you're going to play this game, get through it as fast as possible. Enemies spawn as you break boxes, but their AI is delayed so they don't have time to hit you as you crack your way through the blocks. The stat increases make you an absolute powerhouse, but for some reason, they made nodes that simply heal Holly that you can't get back. This isn't explained early on, and I bought all of them thinking they were health increases, but nope, I just made the game a little tougher for myself. Regardless, I've probably put more time into this game than many will be willing to give. It's a mess of ideas that have been executed in a way that feels like we're playing a game made by students who are learning depth first search. However, this is from a developer acquire and publisher Anaplex, who I felt should have the tools and budget to create a more robust gameplay loop. There's so much missing in this experience and I can't advise anyone to play it unless you are very, very bored. Still, I didn't encounter any glitches, and the items from exploring the dungeons do contain optional texts that make a compelling case for who Holly is, and possible narratives that this game could have at one point explored. Ancient Weapon Holly is not a good dungeon crawler, it's not a good action game, and it's not a good roguelike. It fails tremendously at everything it does and then presents players with a lazy conclusion after they've lost brain cells trying to understand why they played the game for longer than 30 minutes. I was hoping that after the 10th floor something would happen. I wanted the game to evolve, for the dungeon themes to change, to unlock a new skill tree, or to get a new weapon, but instead I was greeted with another static image and no incentive to keep playing. So hold on to your money because this game isn't it. Noisy Pixels giving Ancient Weapon Holly a 3 out of 10.
Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Music Pixel is run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy pixel.